Hi everybody, welcome to my 15th beam video. In this video I'm going to be plotting the shear force and bending moment diagram for this beam you see here in terms of Q and L. Now I'm going to solve for the smallest value that B can be, given that this is our cross section here. So there's going to be two cases we're going to need to check for B. The first case is when the beam fails in bending at 90 MPa, and the second case when the beam fails in shear, all right, when the shear is 50 MPa. So we're going to have to solve two equations, find two values of B, and then pick the one that we need. All right, so let's go ahead and plot the shear force diagram and the bending moment diagram, because we need to find the components of these two equations. All right, and we need to find M and V so let's go ahead and do that first. So we'll start, like always, in every beam scenario with an overall free body diagram. All right, and the magnitude of this force is Q, all right, given in some sort of force per meter times the total number of meters. In this case, it's 3L. And we can do sum of forces and sum of moments. Alright, so that's our reaction. So now let's go ahead and find our internal forces, which we do by making a cut, thereby exposing them. Make a cut here where the conditions are the same, then after the support we make another cut where the conditions change. Call it 1 and 2. So a free body diagram of 1. All right, and just about the four, we can do sum of forces into y. And we can find that and I take the sum of moments about the v1 here. That makes it so I don't need to use v1. If I need to use v1, I would have to use this equation. There's a chance I make a mistake. By taking about the cut, I never need to use V1, so it eliminates the possibility of making a mistake in that respect. Alright, there we go, and then the second free body diagram, of this last piece here.
All right, there we go. So there's our shear force for both and a bending moment for both. I didn't go through all the mathematics. It's relatively straightforward. So even at this point in the course, you should be able to figure that out. Let's go ahead and plot these so we can more easily find the location of their maximum values. So I'll redraw the beam. Alright, so here we have it, our shear force and a bending moment. So taking our equation from the next, the last page here, I'll just copy them down beside for easy reference. All right, and then of course section one is here, and two is here. All right, so going ahead and graphing these, V1 starts at, when x equals zero, we have three Q L by four, and it goes down linearly to negative five fourths Q L. All right, crossing the line here at and V2, we jump up to a QL, so it's higher than this. And when X equals L, or this distance here was L, it's zero. All right, there we go. So, a few things to notice. The reaction at the support here brings us up 3Q by 3QL by 4. That was the reaction. And then this force slowly pushes us down, and then we get reinforced by this reaction here, which is of magnitude 9 over 4QL. All right, and that's exactly the distance. And, of course, we're ending off with zero shear force. So note that the zero position here is important because V is a derivative of this. Wherever this is zero, we're going to have a maximum or a minimum at this point over here. And we can see that if we plot it. All right, and the maximum value is indeed attained right here in the first piece at least, and it turns out to be all right so there we go some nice classic Actually, pretty nice looking shear force diagrams and bending moment diagrams. So, from this, we can find the magnitude of our maximum shear stress is right here. Or, sorry, right down here. And the same reason the magnitude of our maximum bending stress is right here. All right, so now let's go into calculating what they actually are using these equations. All 
All right, so the moment of inertia of this cross section, if I just draw it back up here, the moment of inertia is B H, which is 2B squared by 12. All right. And the y distance up from the centroid, in this case, can be b or b. So y equals to b in our case. So plugging these all together into this equation here, using our maximum bending stress, you can find that b is going to be equal to the cubic root of All right, you can recognize the terms here. This is our maximum bending stress. This is our load. This is our length. And I've just rearranged it so we get some terms happening. Get things uh, nicely in their place so you don't have to go through all the algebra. And we find that B, in this case, is 48.9 millimeters. All right, and I'll call that B sigma because depending on what the other minimum uh, value of B we get from the Shear stress, that's going to be what determines it in the end of the day. So you know that shear stress, all right, and now what's Q in this case? All right, so we already found I, we know B, we know V to be this. So what is Q? Well, Q is the first moment of area, all right, and we base it off of the neutral axes of any sort of cross section. And the largest value we're going to get for Q is when we take just this piece above. So exactly half of a cross section in this case. So when Y equals zero, we're going to get the biggest piece. All right, and the moment of area for that, for anything actually, is the centroid times the area. The Y of the centroid that's half the distance up to here. So it's B by 2 times the area, which is B on the bottom, and 2B by 2 on the sides, so that's B squared. So total B is B cubed by 2. All right, and we take this, plug it into here. We take I from here, plug it into here. We take V and plug it into here. We get... All right, so there we go. I'll work that one, out, that one out in a little bit more detail because the shear stress is something new. All right. Now, which one of these do we choose? All right, we're told to find the minimum value of B. So knee-jerk reaction, oh, that's the smallest value. That's the answer. All right, I actually did that on one of my quizzes that asked this question, and I got the answer wrong because it turns out this one is the smallest B can be in this situation. 
because it will fail in shear at 11.4 millimeters. All right. So if it's a, if it's going to fail at 48.9 in bending, by the time it gets to fail in shear, it's already been failed the longest time ago in bending. Or in other words, it will definitely fail at 11.4 millimeters if it had already failed at bending at 48.9. So this here is the minimum value of B for this design problem. So this here is the answer. All right, so this is a classic design problem. Probably the most realistic, actually. Getting a beam, take into account multiple types of failure modes, and then go and calculate a minimum value based off of those things. All right, so that brings us to the end of this video. Uh, I hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you in my next few videos on shear in beams.